Hey, I'm Yale, and I can feel pretty alone when I'm working from home. Everyone else seems to have these cute pets that visit them all the time, and even sit on their lap. But my lap has a severe lack of pets right now. I do have one friend, Mr. Robot Arm over there, but he's pretty heavy, and I don't want to get hit in the face while I'm working. Lucky for me, I have a bunch of RC cars, desperately looking for a purpose in life. These are going to be perfect. They can drive around my room and are a solid 7 on the lapability scale. But I can't keep driving them manually all the time. I mean, technically I could, but then I wouldn't get any work done. So I need to find a way to automate the controls of each RC car. I do have one giant problem though. They all use the exact same frequency. Well, this means they would be very good at synchronized dancing. The moment one of them gets off course, it's guaranteed chaos. Let's see if I can change the frequency of each remote so they can work independently of each other. Wait, what's this? A ZJPO2R? Never heard of it. And neither does the internet, apparently. After a thorough investigation, I concluded that the three motors are wirelessly controlled by this board over here. Okay, I admit, I have no idea how to work with this. Apparently, this little thingy here controls the frequency, but it's like totally soldered on. I even bought like a bunch of these with all these different frequencies. But then I was like, what if I can't change the frequency? How am I even going to automate this? I don't know how this works. <sighs> I have no idea what to do. All right, I'm back. After a good night of sleep, I've decided to throw this all away and use a little microcontroller instead. All right, first I need to figure out how to control the motors. If we dig a little deeper, we see that the car has three motors. Two for going backwards and forwards and one for turning left and right. If we simply power DC motors, they will always turn in the same direction. If I connect them directly to my Arduino, the car will only go forwards and left. So, unless we're building a NASCAR car, I'm going to need a separate DC to DC motor driver. Oh, what's that behind your ear? A DC to DC motor driver? What a coincidence! Okay, okay. Hmm. Ooh. Everything is connected. Time for motor test number one. Alright, I should uh, probably make it wireless. Lucky for me, my Arduinos have built-in Bluetooth. So I made this little website with some RC controls that I connect my car to and then off we go! Wait a second, why does it feel so slow? And why doesn't it turn anymore? Compared to the original car, it's way slower. Okay, since they are both powered by the same battery, the motors should go around the same speed. But looking at the meters, the DC motor controller seems to have a pretty big voltage drop. So I guess I'll try to uh, up the voltage in some way. This solution is actually pretty easy. I just need to replace the battery with a battery bank. And off we go! <laughs> Much better. This little voltage problem did show me one more pretty big issue. The turning. Right now it's controlled with a really fast spinning motor and some friction connections to rotate the wheels in a certain direction. But at the moment the speed gets too low, it just doesn't work anymore. So I'm just going to change this to a much more reliable servo motor. With this 3D printed clamp and crank, it's a drop-in replacement. Man, the car is really getting pimped out. Time to test my new cars. All right, motor test number one. Yes, they work! Come back to me! Okay, I can now control them all separately. But there is still one big problem with this sentence. I. I don't want to control them. I want them to control themselves. And now that they all have separate controls, it's become even more difficult. Time to teach these cars how to drive. Driving lessons are very expensive. And I don't want to be responsible for letting these rascals on the public roads. So I'm gonna set up a simulated environment. I recreated my RC cars one-to-one -one in 3D and set up the scene in Unity where the cars want to find the easiest path to the ball. But before I can drive them virtually, I need some information about the real cars. Hey, I'm Jelle and I'm Jelle and we're the fast guys. How fast do these cars move? I don't know. Well, me neither. Let's find out. Whoa, <laughs> wow, that's so fast. But how good is it at turning? Well, good question. Oh wow, mm. look at that radius. Impressive. Wow. Wonderful turn. 
Hey, Yannick, I got another great idea. Yeah, yes, let's set yes. them on fire. <laughs> <laughs> okay, enough of that. Let's put the values in the simulation. Since pets tend to move pretty randomly, I tried to make my cars do the exact same. But that quickly devolved into chaos. They're even worse at driving than my Roomba. Alright, scratch that. Time to set up a target system. If the car knows where the target is, how does it know how to get there? Well, the car tries to reach the goal in two simple steps. First, turn the car as fast as possible, so it looks straight ahead at the target. And second, go straight until you reach it. The second part is really easy, you just press forward. But how do you calculate the rotation part? After a lot of head scratching, I think I found the solution. So what I need to do is, first, set out the turning radius of the car in the direction of the target. This circle is the path the car will travel if it keeps turning at its max angle. Then, find the tangent line between the turning circle and the target points. Finally, calculate the distance the car needs to cover while turning by determining the partial circumference sur this little part here of the arc using the inner angle. Ah yes, look at that beautiful part. Oh, wait, how do I fix this? If a point is inside the turning circle, the car can never reach it, unless it goes the other way. Haha, <laughs> oh, perfect, much better. There is one more thing. The current path is terribly inefficient. If the point is super close by, it will always make a whole turn just to end up one centimeter behind its initial position. So I made him be able to go backwards as well. Now there is no point in the whole world this car can't reach. Unless it turns out a batteries or oh. gets stuck somewhere oh. or I lose the connection. Speaking of connection, let's see how they all work when they drive together. Well, we start off great, but the simulation has no way of knowing where the car is in real life. So over time, the virtual and the real car are in completely different spaces. I need to add some positional feedback to my cars. Usually this is done with a mounted camera on the car. But I don't have four cameras laying around. I have just one. So I'm going to track my cars using the same system I used for my football tracking game. Only now I'm not tracking my joints, I'm tracking the cars. I was trying to use some object detection software, but it kept thinking it was like a cell phone. Even after giving it a little hint, it was still pretty unreliable. And even then, all I get is like the word car. Well, I know it's a car, I need to know which car it is. And also, with just a giant rectangle, I have no idea which way the car is looking. No, I'm going to use something much more simple. Tracking markers. They are super easy to use and only need one camera to detect its exact location. Just slap a marker on top of the car and I know exactly where it is. They should finally be able to move pretty reliably on their own. But just look at them. They look like Frankenstein's monsters. They're hideous. How are they going to be my emotional support system if I can get electrocuted at any moment? Time for a makeover. All right, this car is in a desperate need of an upgrade. We've got you covered. Don't know where to put your wires? Don't worry, this battery compartment is the perfect spot. These ugly pink panels have to go. After we removed the panels, it was time for our own custom solution. Speaking of ugly panels, the whole interior was terrible. Just throw it all out. Yes, we're finally ready for the big reveal. These cars didn't just get an upgrade, they got a whole personality. We have Happy, always driving around the place, ready to have some fun. And we got angry, drives around like he owns it and really likes to bump into things. And we got sad, always wanting to be alone and likes to stay alone in a little corner. Finally, after weeks of hard work, I can finally enjoy my little pets. How has my life changed since I created my new pets? I mean, everything's different now. Not a day goes by when I'm not excited to meet my new best friends. Yes, sometimes they can be a little demanding, but they give so much back. They also require pretty frequent recharging, but at least they can clean up after themselves. And they also need constant surveillance in order to function. But I wouldn't want it any other way. Did I complete my goal in the end? All I can say is that I don't need real pets anymore. <laughs>